Welcome back to another episode of Meet the Scholars. My name is Libby Krieger and today I am joined by Dr. Jan Dutt. Dr. Dutt received his PhD from Emory University in the program of Ecology and Evolutionary Biology. Dr. Dutt has been at Grove City College since 2004, teaching a variety of courses in biology and science and religion. He has also been a fellow of biology and medical ethics here at the Institute for Faith and Freedom for several years now. Thank you so much for joining me today, Dr. Dutt. Thank you, Libby, for talking with me here. So Dr. Dutt, I'd love to just jump right in and ask you about this SSFT course, Science and Religion, which is a requirement for every student who graduates from Grove City College. Can you give me some insight as someone who has taught and helped develop this course? Yes, I think uh, it's interesting that the course is unique to Grove City College, and I don't know that anybody out there has a course that's required of its students in quite the way we do this. It's, so when we look at SSFT as a particular course, we're actually looking at, at and developing the, that idea of Christians being involved for historic and philosophical and theological reasons, and also preparing them to deal with some of the perennial issues that science brings to the Christian mind, and that has to do with origins. What does, it look, what does science say about the origins of the universe, the cosmos, the origins of life? How did it happen? Uh, the origins of humanity. And we can look at the science and be informed by it, while at the same time not surrendering what we know Scripture is telling us in terms of uh, definitions and the identity of humans and our role within that creation. And then, of course, uh, because of the, the technological place that we are in, in terms of our society today, there's a raft of issues that come to us. As a biologist, I usually consider things like cloning, uh, stem cell research, uh, genetic engineering, and of course now we see that genetic engineering technology even being applied to humans and human embryos. You know, these are profound issues and concerns that, cr that Christians who actually understand what it means to be in the image of God can understand how these particular technologies may be assaulting that particular concept and uh, even eroding it and gives us a basis then for responding to these things as citizens in a culture that really does need a lot of salt and light. I think that's such a foundational, important topic for all of us Christians to understand. Now I'd love to dive even deeper into that subject. Can you give me some opinion on what the response to someone who says science and religion are incompatible? Well, a, again, it's, it's a character that um, is, likes, likes to be advanced by certain secularists. But anybody who knows the history of this realizes that the, uh, that, that the Christian mind has been almost pre-programmed to look into uh, the, the aspects of the creation and to understand it more deeply. And the heavens declare the glory of God and the firmament shows forth his handiwork is sort of uh, a, a prompt for Christians to actually get in there and to take a look at it. Uh, understand the workings of, of, of the natural world, world and in so doing, you know, give the glory to God in terms of His sovereignty, in terms of His guidance, His providence, you know, uh, over these things. And then the other side of the coin is as salt and light uh, contributors to society, we always think about how we can make the world better for our neighbors. And so those applications that we see in science are natural outgrowths of our understanding of this. You've touched on this a little bit in the past few minutes, that we're living in an increasingly secular world. How do you equip students to be natural scientists and also Christians in their future studies and careers? I think that's a great question. And it's, uh, first of all, they have to know the science. And we don't do any service to our students at Grove City or any place uh, if we don't equip them well with the best science of the day. And those definitions make all the difference in the world. You're studying evolutionary biology, for example, and I happen to teach that course. Evolutionary theory in the mainstream is trying to convince us, for example, that we're not in the image of God, that we have been derived like all other species through the process of evolution. And we quite frankly understand that evolution certainly is operative, 
But we also understand that that particular definition of humanity simply doesn't work within the biblical context of things. And actually when you try to develop a society that defines humanity in that way, it's not a successful society. And one that looks at biblical definitions of who humans are. What does it mean to be the image of God? What does it mean to be fallen? What does it mean to have uh, uh, the, the assignment of having dominion? and stewardship. Uh, this puts the human expression and human experience in a completely different category and I think a much more healthy category than what you would see in the mainstream theorist. You know this is such an important conversation to have and one I think more Christians need to be having. So finally I just want to ask you about any projects or research that you're currently working on. You know as I as I process the issues of the day, uh, you never know when an article is going to show up in the Faith and Freedom or perhaps some other publication somewhere that actually deals with these issues. Um, these things are classic. Uh, IVF, uh, in vitro fertilization, what are we going to do with all these embryos that are in, cry in cryo storage? Um, I think a Christians, Christians have a response to this uh, that is significantly different than what a lot of people think. And those types of uh, 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 situations, those types of issues come, can come up from time to time and I have an opportunity often to respond. Well, we here at the Institute are always excited to see your insight. So thank you so much for joining me today. Well, I'm glad to be here. Thanks for having me. Of course. And thank you so much for tuning in to this episode of Meet the Scholars. If you go to our website at faithandfreedom.com, you can sign up for our email and get all of the announcements straight into your inbox. Make sure you like this video, subscribe to the channel, and we will see you here next week for another episode of Meet the Scholars. Thank <laughs> you.